Hello everybody and good afternoon if you were on the East Coast and sorry about the slight delay, just some, you know, technical difficulties, but uh, we are ready to get sewing a leather bag. So I am really excited about this because I have been just on like a leather sewing uh, journey this past couple of weeks. Um, I made... Uh, I'll go grab it. It's on my table. I made uh, our Highlands leather bag. I made it last week and I'm obsessed with this pattern. It's so cute. It's the free sew along pattern right now on so Oh, excuse me. <laughs> so excited. I'm so daily and uh, so daily network. So only for another month you can go and get this sewing pattern for free and then head over to this channel um, and watch Sadie sew it from start to finish. I lengthened mine a little bit and there will be an article on SewDaily.com soon where I show my modifications, but I lengthened it a bit because I like a long wallet and I also stitched a matching leather wallet. So I'm just in a, like, a leather sewing mode right now so i wanted to share more leather sewing tips another bag project because this is kind of a special nod to a special launch that we go we have going on we created a brand new book called sewing bags for every occasion and the crossbody bucket bag which i'm going to be sewing today live from start to finish um, is included in the book so you can get the the book on amazon you can get it you know printed hardcover or you can get the ebook version and both include all of the bag patterns and instructions but i'm going to show you how to sew one of them live so if you grab the book you can get this pattern included and also actually you i used the wallet pattern that's in the book to create this wallet it's just like i did some modifications to it um because i like i love to hack so i just made just like a really simple wallet and the link to order that book is in the description of uh of this video so now on to the fun fun part of sewing another leather bag and actually like they come together so easy sadie does a great job at demonstrating how to work with leather and how to sew this bag um she really she really uh, taught me through it and she also has a brand new course on Sew Daily, the Lux Leather Workshop, in which she talks a lot more like sewing leather techniques, hand sewing, all the tools and patterns and techniques you're gonna use. So I'll just go over specifically what I need to complete the crossbody bucket bag. I have my leather sewing machine needles, which are super important. I have a Teflon foot that glides over the leather. I tried a walking foot, which also works, um, but you need something that's not kind of that shiny, sticky metal, so it glides nice and easy over, over your leather. I also have some top stitching thread because I love contrasting top stitching thread in leather. Um, if you see kind of on this, like look at that top stitching on that leather um, and a nice heavyweight top stitching thread works really great and the pattern that I chose the crossbody bucket bag also has grommets and after Sadie showed installing these um it's just grommets are so easy to install you don't need any special tools a kit comes with the tools you need so I wanted to sew one that has more grommets on it and I think hardware and metal makes your handmade bags look really professional and store bought and the leather I'm using is from Montana leather and I'm using, I'm gonna sew the bucket bag in all green. So I'm gonna have a green, green bag. And I thank you everyone for joining me. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Linda. Um, thanks for joining me. And let's get to the fun part. Um, so I'm gonna hop over to my table and I'll show you the cutout pieces of my crossbody bucket bag. 
So I have the pattern uh, instructions printed out here. And you can see uh, the ch there's a chain in this purse. But I don't have a chain. And uh, I just wanted to use, I had some extra leather. So I just cut strips. These are the same strip dimensions that are in the Highlands leather purse. So it's just a long strip of, I just did the length of my leather piece in three quarters of an inch. And then I'll show you how to sew that strap together. Cause I, I cut several lengths because the cap, uh, like the, the, uh, the leather piece is only like a fixed width, right? So you can't cut a really long strip, but if you want a long strap, you need to sew them together. So that's just one modification that I did, but everything else is according to the bag instructions. And you're going to need six grommets for this. And I just picked up uh, this leather, I mean, sorry, this grommet kit is from Montana Leather, but you can find grommet kits uh, online and it comes with a tool and these are gold. And I, I prefer gold over silver for my kind of leather bag accents. So in terms of the pattern pieces, so here you are going to cut one rectangular panel for the uh, exterior and you don't have to use leather. You can use pleather, you can use canvas. If you're using fabric, you're going to want to also cut interfacing, but I don't want to interface my leather, but this leather, this particular leather has a bit of drape to it. It's not super structured and thick. So what I did for this bag is I wanted it a bit of structure. So I actually built it into my lining. So the lining pieces, so you have one exterior rectangle, you have one lining rectangle. So I cut in a matching print. I love a printed lining to a solid outer bag fabric, but I actually interfaced the lining instead of the exterior for structure because this is just kind of your basic 100% cotton. So that's what I did in my case, sewing this bag pattern in leather. And I cut out the pocket piece. I've already just pre-sewn it. It's just right sides together, you know, stitch and then flip it right side out. Um, so you're gonna cut pocket and the lining piece. And then there is a base piece that you're going to cut in your exterior fabric. So I cut one of my leather and then I cut one in my lining and I also interfaced my base piece as well. So there's really not that many pieces uh, to this design. And some modifications that you can do, you know, here we have the bag is like a fixed width. If you wanted to make it taller or wider, you can easily modify these rectangle pieces, but I'm just gonna sew it as is. So in my instructions, the first step is to sew the uh, pocket lining uh, together. So, I have my pocket piece all sewn. So the first step is fold the pocket in half widthwise, stitch the long edges, turn the pocket right side out. And so now I'm just gonna give it a press and designated the pocket folded edge as the upper edge and top stitch, upper edge using an eighth of an inch. So I'm just gonna give it a quick press. Um, let me just grab my iron, it's just right here. This is like, there's not much ironing in this bag because you don't really wanna iron leather. So I'm just gonna give this a really light press. There we go. And then I am going to top stitch along that folded edge right here. So I have two layers of uh, my pocket. Actually, I'm going to top stitch because it folded. So the trees are going up. So I want this to be with the right side <laughs> of my pocket instead of the directional print going down. So I'm going to top stitch, um, top stitch right here. Oh, hello from Vancouver, Leslie. Oh, it's morning there. Yes, I guess it would be morning here, there. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to top stitch along this edge. Let me angle this camera a little down. There we go. And I do not have my leather needle installed yet because 
I'm just sewing my cotton lining, so I don't need that leather needle quite yet. So I just did a top stitch right along there. Up oh, there, my scissors. So once I'm ready to sew the leather, I'm gonna switch to my leather needle. And here I don't have my top stitching thread. I just have a, um, I just have a basic thread here. Okay, so now we have press the lining main panel in half widthwise. Oh, so we're visibly marking the center. So now I'm gonna take my lining piece and I'm going to fold it. It says wrong sides together. What I'm just gonna create like a little finger pre crease. And so I'm just gonna kind of note where that crease is and I'm gonna center my pocket on that center fold. And I'm gonna align all the bottom edges and I'm going to pin, I'm just gonna pin in the center. And after this step, I'm probably not gonna use sewing pins again. I need to use clips for my leather because we don't want to pin into leather. And so now I'm just going to top stitch the pocket along both sides. Going to, I'm going to top stitch down one side and I'm going to pivot at the bottom just to kind of base those edges together. And then I'm going to top stitch up the side. And I mean, you could add more pockets if you want. This bag just has one interior pocket. You could add a wider pocket. If you wanted a dual pocket, you could cut it twice the width and then sew it in the center so you have two separate pockets. It's your bag. And that's why we love to sew because you can customize everything that you make according to how you use it. So now we have... <laughs> Your pocket. Oh, thanks, Esther. How how are your how's my pregnancy going? It's going really great. He is very active. He's kicking a lot. Um, I'm six months now, so I'm getting there. <laughs> so I think next time I'll probably do a baby project. But thank you for asking, Esther. Um, it's just such a really special time. I'm so grateful and so excited. <laughs> um, all right. So I have my lining. Okay, so the next step is to designate one exterior panel as the long edge as the upper edge and position the lining and exterior, the right sides together, stitch. See. Okay, so we're going to now stitch the, I'm gonna zoom this out a little bit. Oh, there we go. I'm going to stitch the lining to the exterior, exterior panel. So you'll see in this step right here, we have the lining and uh, the bag. So you're going to want to stitch this top edge where the pocket opening is, not the bottom. So I am going to pin these right sides together, or I'm going to clip them right sides together. So you can see, you can see my top stitching here. I have my bobbin thread is matching to my, um, my leather so I'm going to align those so you have the pocket opening and I'm just going to clip and I am going to stitch these together and now I'm going to switch to my leather needle 
and I'm going to switch to my leather foot as well. Just going to read a step ahead. Yeah, so then, okay, I can understitch them too. Understitch the lining. Okay, we can do that. I'm just going to keep my thread the same uh, for now too. But I am going to switch my needle. And I'm going to be using a size 90 leather needle. So I'm just going to unscrew this. Da -da. And I can, I was sewing a lot with this needle. Um, I sewed like a, basically a whole quilt with it. <laughs> yes, I've been quilting too. I sewed my friend a baby quilt last week. Um, and it was... It was actually really fun. Like ever since I sewed that quilted towel topper, uh, no, not the towel topper, sorry, the table runner, the table topper <laughs> on this YouTube channel, I've been getting really into quilting. It's just nice just to relax and sit at your sewing machine. Um, just, I oiled my machine a couple days ago. So I did the best I could to wipe it, but still some oil residue is on it. And a reminder to oil your sewing machine. <laughs> I hadn't done it in a long time. Um, Cause I noticed it squeaking when I was sewing my other bag. And that usually is an indication that it needs some oil. I need to get a fresh, I need to, I think I left my scissors over here. Did I? I, I do this every time. I like I just have I'm sure this is very very relatable to all of you where did they go I just had them I didn't bring them over there did I oh they're under my I need a necklace to where my scissors are I need to have two, I need to always have one here. I know there's so many like solutions to this problem. Where do, does anyone have any good solutions to not always misplacing your snips? Do you use like a necklace, a pocket? I've seen like where you put Velcro on your machine and then you like always like keep it to your machine. Okay, now I'm going to also switch to my leather foot. So here's my Teflon foot. I'm going to switch. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to also increase my stitch length a little bit. When I'm sewing with leather, leather, I like just a little bit of a longer stitch length. I find it feeds through the machine a little bit easier. And especially for top stitching, I definitely like a longer stitch length. Leslie says, that's why I have two small pair of scissors everywhere. Yes, I just need more scissors. I think that's, I think that's the, that's the solution. More scissors. Okay. So I'm just stitching. I'm just stitching the width of my presser foot. Linda says, I can relate to you just looking all over for your scissors. That's me all the time. And I have, and I have about three pair and still can't find them. Oh. It's just like, they. it makes sense just to always keep them near your machine. But I always walk away with them that are usually at my ironing station. Okay, then while I'm here, I'm going to just separate my lining from my leather bag 
and I am going to have my allowance lay towards my leather and I'm just going to understitch within that allowance. And this is why you can start to see why your Teflon foot is really handy because we do have part of the foot running along the leather and it's sticky. So this helps it glide nice and easily. And I'm just using my hands to separate them. I'm just about an eighth of an inch away from the seam, I'm top stitching the lining just to help that seam lay flat. And I just have a white thread on top just to match the lining, but in the side seams, I'm gonna switch to match my bobbin thread in this green um, because I want the side seams of my bag and the base seam. Um, if the stitches are noticeable, I want them to be in matching thread. But I mean, I could have just had this from the start and had green top stitching on here, but. Okay, so now we have our bag that looks something like this for now. And while I'm here, I, um, I'm gonna be sewing like the side seams together. So I'm just gonna switch to my green thread for the top, because my top stitching is complete on my lining. So just going to quickly thread. I think I think I need to sew like a, if maybe if I have extra strap from this bag I can create like an a scissor necklace I think always having them around my neck might help but I'm not sure I'm sure then I'll forget I you know what I bet I'll have them around my neck and I'm gonna be looking all over for them and forget <laughs> and forget that they're with me similarly to you know glasses that can happen a lot if you have glasses on the top of your head and you're looking for them <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna grab a sip okay next step so now we are going to stitch our bag, kind of I'm going to fold it in half widthwise, and we are going to stitch this edge together, but we're going to leave an opening in the lining to turn the bag right side out. Now, since these instructions are for a non-leather, um, it's easier to push through fabric through an opening than leather. So I'm going to actually use a bigger opening. So in this pattern, they suggest leaving a four inch long opening along the main panel. Actually, that, that should seem about right. Four inches should seem, maybe I'll do four and a half uh, inch panel just to, just to make sure. So I can pin my panel pieces. So I'm going to just start pinning from the bottom but I am going to cross pin four inches. So let's see, here's one. So I'm just using kind of my grid. So one, two, three, four. I guess I can do four. It seems like a decent opening. I might do four and a quarter because I don't want to approach too close to this seam right here. So I have my opening. So I'm going to stitch here and then I'm going to stitch along here. So I'm going to make sure I'm matching up, just peeling this back, making sure I'm matching up that, that seam. There we go. And so I'm going to stitch here, 
backstitch at this pin and then backstitch there. All right, here's our first seam that's both leather, both layers are leather. That's a tongue twister. So for interior seams for leather, I like to match the leather for like interior seams, but for top stitching, I just change the top thread to the top stitching and I leave the bobbin thread matching. So I'm just stitching. Here. And I'm going to do a couple back stitches just along that seam just to make sure it's extra secure. And then when I reach this pin, I am going to back stitch. go and then I'm just going to skip over that opening and then I'm going to start stitching there okay So now we have kind of a tube that looks like this. And so now you can um, kind of visualize, you see those circle base pieces. So at this point, the next seam is to sew the exterior circle base piece to this end, and then the lining circle base piece to this end. And then you can flip it through the opening. And then like it's, <laughs> That's basically done the seams of this bag, like super easy. And then it's just sewing the strap, installing the garment, the garments, the grommets, and then stitching the opening closed. Um, so bags, like there are, bags can come together super easy, especially if you're using like a really luxurious fabric, like a pleather, let like, you know, it, it, you can have a nice simple design and it's really easy to sew. Esther wonders, can you use top stitch from metallic thread. I personally have not used metallic thread on leather. I'm worried. I mean, metallic thread is even a difficult thread to stitch with on regular fabric. So I would be hesitant, but maybe if there, you can find a product that is metallic top stitch weight thread because the thing about top stitching thread is the weight of it it um it's a bit thicker than regular thread so if you can find a metallic top stitching weight thread i'm sure that would work it's just test and then also you can make sure you get a metallic sewing machine needle but i don't know you know that's a difficult one because do you go with a leather sewing needle or do you go with a metallic thread needle because the metallic thread needles have that a larger opening to reduce kind of shredding and breaking in the metallic thread. So again, test, test, test. Um, but it's a good question because uh, that would, that would totally look super cute. Um, but what I'm going to do quick before I get into sewing the base, I am just on the lining piece. I am just going to press the allowance is open and then press the allowances along the opening flat so it's easier to stitch them closed together. So I'm just going to give this a press but not go into my leather. So I'm just going to give this a press. And actually, you know what? You know what I might do? Because again, I. I'm a huge fan of top stitching and I like when leather edges lay flat and top stitching helps do this because uh, you don't want to press it. 
So I can kind of finger press this as much as I can. But now is a good time. You can go through this opening and you can just top stitch along either side of this seam to make it lay flat. You could top stitch it to one side, but I'm gonna lay it open. So sometimes in bag and leather sewing, there's lots of switching between, um, between threads. So I am just going to unthread my green stitching and I'm just gonna thread my top stitching thread. And I am going to top stitch this seam before I sew the base because I want it to lay flat. So if you're sewing like a bat, if you're batch sewing a bunch of bags as gifts or you're sewing a bag with lots of um, details like top stitching and stuff and you're switching a lot, if you have the luxury of having more than one sewing machine, sometimes I do this for jeans too, is have a machine set up with top stitching thread and then have another machine set up with your internal sewing thread. I have done that before, not with sewing bags, but with sewing jeans, I've definitely done that. Um, and then it makes it so you don't have to re-thread your machine. So now I'm going to kind of go through this opening and lay my, lay my seams flat. And I am going to, top stitch. I'm going to go up here, pivot at the lining, then go back down. And you can just really see how this machine foot just glides over the leather. And so what I'm going to be doing as I'm stitching is pulling my seam away from each other so it lays flat and then double checking on the underneath to make sure my seam allowance is laying flat as well so it's kind of it's some of these seams can be a bit awkward and I should have done usually before I top stitch leather I just go on a scrap piece just to make sure all is stitching well and yeah it looks like there's something funky happening here what's going on Oh, it was just in the beginning. Oh, it just had a little thread nest. You know what? I'm going to. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it just kind of worked out like a little. Um, worked out a little stitch and a little thread nest in the back. That's why I usually like to, to actually. Now I, I've already stopped though. <laughs> I've asked myself, is is this really bothered me? Well, sometimes. It's just where I, so I'm just going to unpick this and start it from this top. And then I'm just going to really make sure that I get my um, stitches back in those holes. I'm thing with me sometimes is with leather and top stitching, I get super like my perfectionism comes out. Like I get, which it's, I shouldn't be as like, this shouldn't have bothered me as much. But if I, I if I was more into the seam, I would forget it. But I was kind of near near the beginning of it. So I'm going to just kind of pick it and then redo it. Because this top stitching is such a like key feature on leather. So you know what? I mean, this is a live look into my studio and this is what I do. <laughs> this is what I do. If I was using matching thread, like if I was use if I had a green top stitching weight thread, I would just leave it. But since I really didn't get that far in the seam, actually I'm gonna, I have my garbage right here and I have just like some pieces of leather. So I'm just gonna make sure that I should have done this before. So see, note my mistake. If you're, once you're gonna, about to top stitch leather, just run through. See, now it's perfect. The machine kind of, it's the settings are good. Everything looking good. Look at that. Look at that stitching. If it comes into focus there. There we go. Look at that. So do that first and then <laughs> your bag. 
That's why I make the mistakes. You watch me to make the mistakes, and then you don't make them at home. Okay. So now I'm just going to go right in those existing holes. You don't want to, if I did this again, I wouldn't stitch rip it because you don't want to stitch rip it too many times because it creates holes and then it could, it could create like a cutting or like a rip line. So you have two chances. <laughs> there we go. I'll try and move my hand so you can see here. Just making sure I'm picking it up, making sure it's laying flat, and then also spreading the seam away. Oh, much better. And then once it's like, you know, you're like, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> it's looking good. Oh, it's, it's now it, my thread's acting up again. Maybe my tension's a bit too tight. Sometimes that can be the case too. Lift. Oh, it seems to, it's just shredding a little bit. stitching okay that's all that matters there we go so this is just kind of again that awkward seam you're kind of going in the bag okay so it kind of broke a little bit there but that's okay yeah the thread is oh you know what the thread was caught under the oh my gosh difficulties this did not happen once i will say this has not happened once when i made my other bag it's just it knows that i'm on live streaming that's uh, that always gets me when the thread gets caught under and then it um it happens to me a lot in embroidery if i don't catch it Okay, now I can start where I picked back off. I'm just going to come up the other side, then pivot, and then close the gap where I was left off. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? <laughs> Something is happening. This did not, I will say, this did not happen when I sewed my other bag. It's all the same um, settings and, oh, geez. Maybe my needle isn't up far enough. You know, troubleshooting. I am being punished for wanting to top stitch the seam of the bag. <laughs> Sometimes when I run into these issues, like I just, I rethread the machine. Like right now I'm going to take out the bobbin and then I am going to re-put it in. Like when I'm having these types of issues, like I'm showing you how I troubleshoot them if Nothing is like visibly wrong. Just rethread, maybe change the needle, take out your bobbin, reload it. And then I like to bring the bobbin thread up after I do that just to make sure 
it's accurately catching. So I like grab the bobbin thread and actually have a bobbin tail so I can make sure that I just reduced the tension a bit too. Okay. Six times the charm, right? <laughs> There we go. Perfect. Now look at that. That's that's looking great. <laughs> this is kind of the thing like with leather, like it is not the easiest fabric to sew with because, you know, it 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 relatively is permanent when you sew stitches in it because it creates holes. But, I mean, practice and testing, as you saw, just really, oh, it looks like it's, it's good now. So I'm just going to kind of come to this center point, and I'm going to pivot. So you can kind of see now I'm just going back, and... connecting where it the thread broke before but that's okay because this will actually be on the inside there's an inch of where this attaches that flips to the inside all right there we go so we have that complete it so now what we can do is we can stitch the bases so now you can see like from the outside um, this will be the, the the seam on the outside of our bag and this is like also great <laughs> great reason why you should but then I interfaced it so the notches didn't come through so notch notch there we go notch and notch then i'm going to do the same to i think have i oh no i'm good i thought i saw it buffering a bit on the string on the stream but it looks like we're good now. So now I'm gonna do the same to my exterior base. Just cut my four notches, cause it's a lot easier when you're sewing like circles to have those landmarks. Now would you want to do the same thing to here? So now I'm going to take this seam and I am going to fold it in half and then do a little clip into my leather and then put those clips together and then find those other two. So I'm like quartering both my bag and the base. And I like to do this at this step, not notching before, because sometimes things can shift. So you want to quarter it as per the opening that you have, if you maybe did a larger seam allowance or a smaller seam allowance, I like to do this at this step of the bag. So again, I am going to quarter and quarter. And these seams will be a bit tricky sewing curves and circles it's always a bit difficult but these notches make it easier so the lining I'm going to start pinning to the lining so I'm taking my base this is you know wrong side out and I'm just going to start with one notch and on the lining you can use pins so I'm going to pin 
here. I'm going to start with those kind of four, four notches. Double checking the seam, three eighths of an inch of the seam allowance. So now I'm just gonna kind of work my way around and just kind of fit that circle into the opening. And you might need to do some clipping along the purse. So just like little clips to help kind of open up. and go along there. So this could take a few pins. So I like to pin this quite a bit. So look at that, we have go, and again, you can do some clipping in here to make it kind of stretch across. I'm just going to kind of pre-clip this section a little bit. I'm going to make like four clips in between my notches, like a quarter of an inch deep, so not too deep. There we go. Because you can see on this side, when it's laying flat, those clips are opening, so they do help. Clip, clip. So these are probably the most difficult seams, as opposed to that <laughs> short top stitching seam that I had trouble with. <laughs> Some days, you know, your machine cooperates, other days it doesn't, you know? It just, you hope that it does cooperate on the days that you decide to live stream. <laughs> but you know what? This is life. This is studio time. This is sewing time. Not everything just goes. Okay, so you're going to have like a lot of pins like this. And then just make sure on the leather side that you put your pins away. You do not want to be tempted to pin, especially this far into the leather. So look at that. We, and then we're going to just stitch in that circle. So now I'm going to put my pins away. I'm going to get my clip bag. And I'm going to do the same thing to the leather. So I'm going to take my leather, put it inside, and start with those four quadrants. So put it up there. Clip. So do those four. And you can clip into this leather too because just make sure it's like not past three eighths of an inch because that is the seam allowance and you won't see them. So you can definitely clip into this leather. And this seam is very similar to this seam that was done on the Highlands leather bag, it was basically sewing a circle into, you know, into itself, a circle into a circle created with a rectangle. So it's a very similar technique. That's why it's a good, um, these two kind of complement each other, like similar techniques, um, sewing circles, sewing straps, um, except for the Highlands doesn't have a lining. So this one is a good kind of next one to do. So you can practice making a bag lining, installing a bag lining. You can, you know, it also has grommets. So these two bags like really complement each other. So if you start with the Highlands leather bag, this one's a great next step too. So I'm just going to go around and again, clip into my bag, not my base just to make it easier. But honestly, like this bag has what? One, 
like two, three, like four or five seams in it. Like not too many seams. Oh yeah, that's made it a lot easier to kind of, you can see how those edges are coming together nicely. And so now I'm, when I go back to my machine, I am going to s switch back to just my green on green thread, not my top stitching. I'll go back to my top stitching for the top of the bag as well as the strap. If it continues to cooperate. All right, so this we have our base all clipped. So this is what our bag looks like now. Looks like a, you know, those pillows that are those round pillows. Okay. So I'm gonna unthread my top stitching thread. I am going to thread. My green thread. And I suggest sewing the lining circle first, just to give you the idea of sewing the circle. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, just so you can practice the circle. Hi, made it so. Hi from sunny South Florida. Have made several bucket hats with the same technique. Yes, a bucket hat has that same technique of sewing kind of that circle around, definitely. All right, so I'm gonna start at the seam here. So I'm going to, and I'm gonna work with my circle side up as well. So I'm gonna start right here. And then I'm just going to work my way around the circle. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of pivoting here as well. Probably go back to a shorter stitch length, but I'm really like spreading these uh, clips as well from the underside. And I'm just going to be rotating, making sure those edges match up as well. So I'm kind of pulling back. You can see on this top layer, making sure those edges match. Just go slow, reposition. Since there are so few seams on this bag pattern, spend some time on the few seams that there are. Yeah, those clips are really helping me. You can even see like from this side, like they're when they're spread and sewn, that means that they are really, really helping and working. That's why also, I mean, it's good to interface um, the lining too, especially for this pattern, because when you clip, it also helps prevent fraying that interface. It kind of, that interfacing stabilizes those clipped in edges. This is really bringing me back to my um, <laughs> my fashion school internships. I interned at a a place where they did custom purses. They hosted uh, 
purse parties and I would I I would make bags all day. And this that was what? That was so long ago. Oh, well over 10 years. I used yeah, and I've just kind of lost, you know, not lost, but like I need to rediscover all my bag sewing <laughs> techniques and um, I got in the habit of purchasing bags, not really making bags. So I'm really getting back into making, making my own bags. Um, probably too, because in my, uh, in my pregnancy, I found I've just been sewing less clothes. I've been sewing a bit of maternity clothes, but I find I just gravitating like, I call this dressing up. I've been in my pajamas for the past six months. Um, and I guess just being also the time of year too. Like I could see if I was pregnant during the summer, there's tons of really cute sundresses and, you know, maxi dresses I could sew and make. Um, but I just find myself wanting to sew a lot of accessories and bags and stuff so I don't have to um, worry about fitting it. All right, this circle is actually coming together quite nice, quite nicely. So I'm confident in sewing the leather one. So always start with the lining one. So again, as you see, I'm just a lot of readjusting, unpinning, spreading open clips, and sewing in the circle. And I am proof that this the, the circle does fit in this pattern. I didn't do any altering. There's no tucks or anything. So if you clip enough, and you sew at that three eighths of an inch of seam allowance, they will go together. So there we have it. There is our circle seam. There we go. Made it so that I have stayed stitched the piece. I'm going to clip a fraying might be an issue. That's a that's a such a great tip. Um, you can do definitely some stay stitching if you're doing like heavy clipping because sometimes definitely if you clip close to the seam and it's really fraying fabric it can go into the seam and it creates like a hole in the garment so that's a great tip for sure okay I'm ready for the leather circle okay and again I'm going to start at the seam if I can find it <laughs> I think since I've been like really enjoying the quilting process and I've been loving sewing bags, I found on Pinterest yesterday um, a quilted like diaper stroller bag and it's so cute. So I think that is next on my list. So it can kind of combine, you know, the relaxation of quilting that quilting provides me um, and the need for a bag because as I've been told <laughs> babies need a lot of stuff <laughs> and I the more things I can sew the better so a diaper like a quilted cute diaper bag is gonna be so fun to make so I'm just going along in the same way just kind of checking my notches and what's really great about this pattern too is the way it was drafted, a smaller seam allowance is a bit easier for sewing these curves. So a three eighths of an inch seam allowance is actually really good. It's easy to work with on this curve. So it's essentially, I measured three eighths of an inch is, sorry, I should have muted. I'm getting all these emails. If you hear these dings, I should have closed my email app. Um, I should have done it after the first ding if you've been hearing them, but. Um, yeah, the, the width of my presser foot is three eighths of an inch. So that's a really easy guide for a circle. Okay, halfway there. And I mean, for this base, like you can, you know, 
switch up the the fabric like you could sew a different color leather do some fabric paneling you could do just a leather base and a fabric body bags are so great for also using up scraps because you could just if you didn't have enough leather to do a whole bag you could just do the base or just the body or you know so leather is great for using up scraps too and bags so i'm just this one needs a little bit more clipping so i'm just going ahead and clipping a little bit more into this kind of section there we go okay i'm almost there and like this bag is like coming together so quickly as i knew it would okay Adjusting. my circles so now it's the fun part so now I'm going to go through the opening and I'm going to flip my bag right side out okay so testing this four and a quarter inch opening flips a leather bag through nicely without too much tugging and too much difficulty all right so now you go like this and then I like to leave the opening uh, open for a little bit because I like to put my hand through and then like really make sure that these edges are looking good and then I like to like roll the edges for the leather made it so as not sure if you already said but can you share where you got your supplies yes so I got my leather from Montana uh, leather and they are linked in the description and I also got my grommet kit from there as well um, my leather needle is Schmidt so I just purchased that at my local fabric store and I actually got my top stitching thread from Amazon um, it's just like a it's a jeans top stitching thread, but it works for leather as well. Um, my clips are just binder clips. These are great. Um, you can buy special sewing clips. These are from Dritz too, but uh, I find that I use a lot of clips and the, the ones from Dritz, I didn't get enough of them. So I use binder clips in, in the meantime. All right, so as you can see, that work I did of rolling the edge, like look how nice that looks. So you can kind of see this already, this bucket bag coming together. It stands, see, both my hands are free. It stands on its own. <laughs> That's good. So now I'm going to kind of clip uh, up here. And now what I'm going to do is stitch the opening closed. So you can hand stitch this opening closed, but I'm just going to put these edges together and just machine stitch because this is the lining and you won't be able to see it. So, and I'm just stitching really close to those folds together. Like I try to even stitch like a 16th of an inch away from that edge. Oh, it even like, look, look at that like top stitching on this side. It looks just nice, professional. 
So now when your bag looks like this, what you're going to do is actually fold it in on itself. So I'm gonna push it in and you want to roll over um, one inch of the leather to, to the inside. So the line, this seam will not be on the top because in the pattern pieces, you saw that the lining was shorter than the bag. If they were the same size, then that would mean that the seam is around the top, but you had some extra accommodation in the body. So it has the opportunity to roll. And this is leaves enough space that the grommet can be inserted into both leather layers. So going in. Oh, this is so cute, this little bag. Oh, this is adorable. And that's why like these, you can see right here, I was a little upset about it. <laughs> they didn't match up perfectly, but it goes inside the bag. So it's not as noticeable. Okay. So now like I like to spend time on these parts of things, like really like, you know, making sure that these are you know, going in. Like, look at how cute that looks already. Um, thank you, Esther. Nice color combo. Yeah, I love kind of that lining in there. So now, I mean, what you could do to establish this edge is actually top stitch around it. What I don't know. I am I gonna regret doing that or not? You could. You could top stitch around that edge. The, the pattern doesn't call for it, but you could. Um, and now the grommets will be inserted here and here. So these sides, actually, you can kind of see the bag goes like this. And that's how it comes together. And the straps are kind of weaved through. So you're going to have like one grommet, two grommet, three grommet, four in there. And so it kind of, that's the kind of the silhouette that this bag creates. Oh, this is a really, really cute bag. So next I'm gonna be sewing the straps and then marking the grommet location. So I'm gonna show you how I sew the straps and this takes one long strap. So the strap, once the grommets are inserted, it threads through all of them, kind of creating this like accordion shape on the side. Um, and then it's, I'm gonna tie it in a nice pretty knot um, so it gets that look, but you can set this aside, but that is such a cute silhouette. Or if you want to, before you you know close it, you could insert some snaps in there and have a magnetic snap closure and then like keep it open. So there are options, but this is a really cute silhouette. So now I'm gonna create this Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, first I'm gonna mark the grommets just so we have those grommet markings. And I'm going to use, um, where's that? It doesn't matter if it um, totally comes out because when you grommet, you cut through the fabric. So you won't notice too much if it's not removable because the grommet will be covering it. So I'm just gonna kind of test some marking things like that, so like that works, um, but it kind of rubs off. So maybe I'll just use, I'm gonna grab over here, I have a permanent marker that I'm gonna grab just for like little dots. But just make sure you measure twice, mark once. So when you get, to find the bag center front, fold the bag upper edge in half. Okay, so here we wanna locate the center front of the bag. And I'm just now kind of just really making sure that the bag is that same one inch all the way down because we don't want to mark the grommet and realize that it needs to slide down more. That's why I'm tempted to kind of top stitch along here right now. just to make sure we're remaining that, you know what, I think I'm gonna do that. Just cause I, I want this fold to be more secure than just like a fold before I mark a grommets because um, it's leather. In fabric, it's a little bit like you can press it to get that crisp edge. 
but I think I'm going to go around and top stitch. Um, I'm going to top stitch this bag. See, you, this is, I'll look inside my studio and I'm like, this is what. <laughs> I'm constantly evaluating my projects, seeing what, what I can do, always thinking of the step ahead and what fabric I'm using, what makes sense. Um, so, but I'm going to grab some scrap leather just to make sure we are good. I feel like I just dropped my scissors. <laughs> oh. But at least what you can take out of this is kind of just that how to sew like just that the classic bucket bag pattern uh, in shape so I'm gonna actually I'm going to just kind of clip this along just making sure that it is remaining at that one inch so as you can see I'm just going to put some clips in here You could use even like a sewing gauge, but I'm just using my, <laughs> my precision eye. There we go. And you can kind of also get a real, like if you push the lining to, if they meet, then it naturally kind of, uh, so I just did some clips along the top and I always like to top stitch from the right side. So I'm going to be going, you know, like this. Okay, so I'm going to be first taking some scrap and I'm not going to do one layer because this is two. So I'm going to like fold it twice. Like I'm going to mimic the same, um, the same, yeah, my thread keeps, um, doing this. I don't, I didn't do that before when I was, I wonder what, I wonder what is, uh, doing that. I'm going to loosen the tension a little bit. Hmm. Maybe I'll change my needle just to be safe. Maybe I'll change it to a 100 needle. I'll step the needle up to a larger size. So I'm going to go to a 100 leather needle. Maybe that thicker needle will help that top stitching thread. Okay, that's two. Try tightening the tension, I mean, loosening the tension, but it seems like, I'm just gonna show you, like this is um, good content for just experimenting and testing with your machine. So what I did is I loosened the tension thinking that the tension disc was pinching the thread, making it shred, it's a rhyme, but indeed I tried that and look at the back. So you see that stitch where it's all loose? That's when I loosen the tension. So I tightened it again and it seemed to stitch well. So just 
again, I like sharing what, what I'm doing. So now I think when I re-tightened it and changed the needle, I think that was the... That seemed to work. I'm stitching along here. And that seems to be the solution. All right, I'm ready for the bag. So now I'm going to top stitch. Okay, so I'm starting right at the seam here. There we go. Oh, that's really thick. So you might need to hand crank it. So now I'm just going to work my way around and top stitch. And it seems so far so good. This is looking good. So all that troubleshooting seemed to um, oh yeah we're fixed now. And now I'm just gonna keep this set because I need the top stitching for the straps. So I'm gonna just top stitch this, mark the grommets, and then sew the straps. Oh. Don't you just like when everything just works nice? That's leather is like a, just a lot of experimenting, troubleshooting, testing, and not constantly dropping your scissors. There we go. Perfect. That is beautiful top stitching. There we go. So now we have a crisper edge so I more confidently can mark my grommet locations. And as you can see, that uh, tip that I had earlier in the video is have your bobbin thread match your leather. So if you do have tension issues, um you're at least just uh, it's usually on the bobbin side so it's not going to be as noticeable so from the inside of my bag you can't see the top stitching but from the outside because usually i mean you can try but when in the past if i've tried to wind my bobbin and top stitching thread it it doesn't like it so i usually just keep my bobbin um the same thread so now truly my bag is ready to start top stitching and again this top stitch was a leather modification because we couldn't really press this edge so now I'm going to mark my grommet so we need to find the center front so I'm going to pinch my bag and I'm going to locate the center front of my bag and I don't want to pin my leather so I'm going to center the binder clip in that I'm just going to fold it and then kind of center the clip so I know that the center of my clip is the center front then it says measure and pin mark two and a quarter inches to either side of the center back along the upper edge and repeat to pin mark four and a half inches to either side of the center back repeat to pin mark two. Okay, so we're gonna go two and a quarter and then four and a quarter, two and a quarter, then four and a quarter, and then do the same thing. So I'm gonna grab a ruler. So two, and, and here's where I also wanna get my grommet, because this will depend, I'm gonna zoom in here. So 
here's my grommet. Now grommets can come in different widths, but I want my grommet to, I, it can go into my top stitching, but I don't want it to, you know, extend the top of it because you want to mark the middle of it. So I'm just going to kind of lay my grommet on here and kind of determine that's where I want it installed. So now I'm going to measure from the middle of this circle. So if I kind of go like this, so two and a quarter, and take my grommet, center it within that two and a quarter. And if you press a little bit on your leather, the circle will make an indent and then you can mark a, a mark, um, a marking in the center of that hole. So two and a quarter. Let's see, like that. So you, I can really see, I just press lightly. I don't know if you can see, um, you can slightly see that little indent. And then I can mark the center. I just did a tiny dot. And then from there, I don't have to keep doing that to every one. And then from there, I can measure down from the top how far that was. So that was um, one, two, three, four, five, was about in between five eighths and three quarters of an inch. Okay. So then once you mark, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to get to the strap quickly. Um, cause I'm not going to install the grommets on here. Um, but cause it's also really loud and I take my grom a tip for grommets is if you have like a garage or a cement um, kind of block in your house, the basement, go there to install your grommets. I found that when I hammer on my grommets on my cutting table, there's too, like there's even still too much give. A hard surface really makes the grommets set in smoother. So I actually mark all my grommets, I cut them with the tool, and then I take them to my garage and hammer them on the cement, like with the wood block. So that's a tip if your grommets aren't um, getting quite uh, kind of cemented together. Um, that's, that's what I do. So go ahead and mark all your grommets. So two and a quarter, and then I'm gonna open it more and then go four and a quarter. I can kind of just gauge on that same level. So four and a quarter. So two and a quarter. And then two and a quarter and then four and a quarters right here. I'm just gonna kind of, there we go. And then do the same thing um, for the center front, two and a quarter, four and a quarter. And then install all your grommets along those lines. And so that, and then you were, you'll thread the strap through kind of like how I just, your grommet will go here and this one will fold in, that one will fold in and the grommets will fold into each other and a long strap is created. So to sew the strap, I'm just going to do a quick um, demo of this and then we'll wrap this up because it's, I'm not going to show you the whole strap. <laughs> I'll just show kind of two sections together. So what I'm doing is I'm overlapping the strap and you can ahead of time use some leather glue and adhere them together, but I'm just overlapping them like one inch. But um, I found that if you just overlap them and then fold them, you can just run. So I've just overlapped them and then fold them wrong sides together. You can just run them under your under your machine. And then I use a rotary cutter to actually secure that edge. And then I just work along my strap using my clips, just folding the strap wrong sides together. So every, you know, five inches or so, I just kind of clip. And you can, again, 
use some leather glue, fold in half. And I'm just gonna make sure that these are that. And it's just as easy as just top stitching along the strap. I'm just going to start to take this to my machine and even like you can fold as you go. Um, so I have kind of two straps worth and I'm going to kind of do like three together. Oh, made it so says I've had to remove a grommet that didn't get set properly. Definitely not. <laughs> so now I'm going to take this to my machine to create the strap. I'm going to lift my foot and um, I like to start right not at the edge just so I have something to help me get started. Um, so that's why I always cut straps longer than is needed. And I just kind of put these together and then stitch quite close to the edge. Okay. And then you just kind of work your way down the strap. So, and then what I've done before, if it's not perfect edge, you can take a roller, a roller, a ruler and rotary cutter and cut even closer to the stitching line to get a really precise line. So I'm gonna continue stitching my strap and I'm going to set all my grommets and then weave my strap through my gar through my grommets and then tie a knot like a little you know fashion knot um, for one of the straps and my bag is done so this was <laughs> I hope you learned something because I definitely learned something I had some troubleshooting but I hope that helped you um, in your own troubleshooting journeys with sewing with leather, sewing with bags, and definitely pick up our brand new book, Sew Bags for Every Occasion. Like it's just great bag shapes and silhouettes um, that you can adapt uh, for your own bag capsule wardrobe. And I'm so glad you joined me. Please join me every month as I continue to do these uh, next month. I don't know what I'm going to sew yet, but it might be a baby project or a maternity project because um, I don't need any more. Like after this bag, I'll, I'll be good. <laughs> but I love this bag pattern. Super cute. The circles were super easy to sew. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks for doing the live, Meg. It's always nice to see how others tackle problems without editing. That's the thing. That's why I love these lives. This is unedited. This is me in my studio. Things happen. And I troubleshoot it just like you do at home. So tune in next time and happy stitching. <laughs> Bye, everybody.